What is up guys and thank you very much for joining me for another episode of Degenerate Watch. So in today's video as the title suggests we're going to be taking a look at some airline agitators and this will be the first video in a brand new series called airline agitators here on Degenerate Watch. There seems to be no shortage of people acting the fool on airplanes so I thought it'd be a great little series to run on the channel. I'm sure we could probably all agree that the last place you want somebody acting stupid or aggressively is on board an aircraft. So just before we jump into our first clip, as always if you enjoyed the video don't forget to drop us a like and let us know your thoughts down below in the comments. Looks like the rapper designer has hit hard times. Either that or that's his twin brother that didn't quite make it as well in the rap game. I think he goes by the alias of Off Brand. What is he doing? Yo, make sure his make sure his uh his his watch card's not on here. His bag though. Make sure his back is on this plane, please. Sit down, please. Sit down. Thank you. Sit over here. Oh, I got some. Wow. That's crazy. I gotta use the bathroom, guys. Whoa. Doodle. Guns out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the flight deck as we sort through this, apparently that individual approached the aircraft from the outside and tried to gain entrance to the aircraft. Uh, that's the information we have now. We are uh, surrounded by law enforcement right now. They're going to, uh, they've apparently apprehended this individual right now. We see him being taken into custody. Uh, because of all the personnel around the airplane, we have had to secure both power plants. Both engines are shut down, obviously, so no one gets injured. No, I'm going to sue, That's but fine. why do not you guys, I paid great money to fly home. I'm inebriated, so what? I'm pretty sure the airline's policy says differently. I'm pretty sure you shouldn't be inebriated when you're traveling on an aircraft. If not for everybody else's good for your own in case something happens, you want to be at your peak in case you have to make an emergency exit, don't you? I'm going to get taxi cab. Now, your mouth now, see, you really have to go down. Your mouth. You just blew it. Okay, so you just blew it. Yeah. Okay, so you got a uh, breathalyzer I can blow no, I'm into. I'm not going to do all that. Your, your verbiage is Yes, because I, I used the F word, but Yeah, you dropped the F bomb, let's go. Yeah, but... Well, I gave you, I gave you a warning. But I why you can't you get right home? Because the captain doesn't want you to. Uh, I'm not arguing with you anymore. I'm, I'm not fighting with the captain. I just want to ride right home. I'll sit here, I'll be quiet, no. I'll drink water. Conversation over. Why? Because I'm not saying anything else to you. But I paid money. Uh, so with nobody buying his story that he's going to be quiet, it's explained to the man that he's holding the flight up for everybody else, which he says he's okay with. That's fine. I paid good money and you guys uh, kicked me off the flight last night. He's saying he paid good money. I'm pretty sure everybody else on the flight paid the same good money as he did and they want to get somewhere but he's holding them all up. This flight he was kicked off of the previous night was actually because the flight was overbooked which he goes on to explain about at length numerous times during this interaction which is pretty long so I've trimmed it down a little bit. I have done nothing wrong. I paid my my flight. I'm a, uh, uh, I, 
a superior person with the flight, which, which is okay. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Dude, just take me to Tampa. I'll be quiet. I, I will not say anything to anybody. You can't take me to, uh, to Tampa? Why? 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 So you're uh, raping everybody else because you don't want to take me home. No, I don't get it. And I don't get it. You're a donut. I know there's rules, but that's a solid Karen line if I ever heard one. I know there's rules, but. And they have two choices where they can go with that. It's either they don't apply to me or can you bend the rules just for me? You all right, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. We'll make sure you're okay, so I am. We, we want to get here and then make sure you're okay. I am. Why do I have to sir? be evaluated by uh, I just want to go home. And no, you're not gone because last night they did the same things to me. Just give me a ride home. I mean, I'll be quiet. I'll be quiet. Um, I paid uh, all this money. Take me home. Yeah. And then what? You won't be allowed to fly with Delta ever again. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to help you out. My I don't care. I spent. My mom just died yesterday, that's why I'm going home. My condolences to the man if his mother has passed away, but I really do hope that he's not choosing that as a sort of clutching at straws excuse for a bit of sympathy. Because nothing surprises me anymore and I do think that people would stoop to that level. So I feel sorry for the man if his mother did pass away and I know people deal with grief differently, but getting full up and then getting onto a plane and causing a nuisance isn't the way of dealing with it. If you get arrested, get locked up and can't get home for the funeral or to help out or whatever role you're going to play in that, well then what use are you? There's no reason to cause extra grief and stress to other family members at an already hard time. You're of absolutely no use to anybody else if you're locked up in jail. And you'll have made the already black cloud of your mother's passing even blacker with you acting the fool, so it's really no good for anybody involved at all. And then uh, you guys want to uh, not let me go home? No. I'm sorry I drank a beer. I drank two beers. But what, what's the deal with that? Uh, my mom died. My mom died. I got to go home. No, you don't care. Now, uh, I'm just trying to help you out. No, 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 no. I want them to come. I want you to go with me. No, so they won't take I paid off. this money. I paid yesterday. I got bumped off three right. flights. I, I, I tried. I'm going to be back. I know. I'm be by myself. And you did because it's not you, it's them. So you're just a, uh, a great person. I know. I tried. I'm just trying to get some. I got a flight for you in an hour. Come no, I you don't have a flight for me. Give me the ticket right now. Give me the ticket. I'll be lucky to get home by the right now. That's okay. But I understand. Thank you, dude. I know. I do this. I've already booked you on the next one at 147. So why? Why? Because by that time you'll be you'll be you'll be sober. Please go with me. Please. I do not want to ban you from flying. Come on, go with me. I, I, I did what you asked me to do, didn't I? I kept my end of the bar. You did, Come on. but I don't understand. Sorry no. uh, right, guys. Sorry right, guys. Uh, had to wait on me. Say try.
When are people going to realise that once the cabin crew and the pilot tell you you're not travelling, you're not travelling, it's game over, get off the flight. Next step is having the police come on and haul you off the thing. And really you're only making a bad situation even worse and wasting everybody's time in the process. The problem with people like that is that they think that once they've paid their money they have a warrant to do whatever they like and then get upset when they're told that's not the way it works. Nobody wants somebody that's had a few drinks and that's being unreasonable to start kicking off up in the air at 30,000 feet. It's all well and good saying you'll be quiet and won't talk to anyone while on the ground. The pilot and the flight crew have a duty of care towards the other passengers on the plane and they're not going to take chances. I think that particular flight crew deserves some recognition as they dealt with the man very patiently and even after him being belligerent and babbling on for a long time and holding everybody up, they were very accommodating to him, even getting him on a different flight. The flight attendant was also looking out for him by saying like he wouldn't like to see him getting banned from future Delta flights, even though the guy said he didn't care. I know the attendant was thinking this guy's drunk and he'll regret it in the morning. So it's actually fantastic that the flight attendant was actually looking out for the man even though he was being so obnoxious. I really hope that man sees the error of his ways. Although he wasn't flying drunk, I don't think he should really be getting onto a plane in that condition again. And like I was saying earlier on there, that you want to be at the top of your game if there's an emergency landing or there's, God forbid, a crash. There's no use having someone scudder drunk falling up and down the aisles and holding everybody else up when you're trying to evacuate. So I fully understand the reasoning behind it and I just don't get why people actually get onto planes in that condition and then expect to be able to fly. You're just putting yourself and everyone else at a disadvantage. There's no problem with having a couple of drinks when you're heading off on your holidays to celebrate. A lot of people do it and have no issues whatsoever. Just as long as you can conduct yourself in somewhat of a reasonable manner and not be a danger to yourself or anybody else, then there's no problem. We're moving on to our next clip now and the gentleman in this clip must have known I was going to start making these episodes so he wanted his 15 minutes of fame because this was only in the news a couple of days ago. I'm not exactly sure what the issue is here in this situation. I don't know whether the guy has had a bit too much to drink or whether he's taken some medication. He may even have some other health problem we're unaware of. I've seen reports of a drug called Ambien which is a popular sleeping pill which many people take to help them sleep but it sometimes can cause amnesia. And flight attendants are aware of a phenomenon they term ambient zombies for people who are sleepwalking or doing other things on an airplane while not fully awake. In any case, it must have been quite unsettling for the passengers seated around them. Let's take a look. The American Airlines pilot stands his ground as a passenger confronts him. Another video shows the same passenger in his seat apparently growling at the flight crew. Dennis Bush recorded these videos on board American Airlines flight 1802 from L.A. to Salt Lake City this afternoon. I just was watching the guy because we were unsure what was happening and, and I just thought in case something does happen here, um, I want to record this. To get up out of his seat. That really put other people, uh, you know, kind of on edge. We didn't know what he was doing. Once the plane landed, Salt Lake City police arrested the passenger, who detectives identify as 61-year-old Timothy Armstrong from Las Vegas. Armstrong was taken to the hospital and then cited for public intoxication and disorderly conduct. This year, the FAA reports there have been over 4,000 reports of unruly passengers on flights, 3,000 of those involving disputes over masks. While it's not clear what this guy's problem was today, the FAA has promised zero tolerance for disruptive passengers and can issue fines which can reach tens of thousands of dollars, criminal charges, and potential bans from flying. I certainly hope he's not flying anytime soon. Dennis says the flight crew on this American flight kept a bad situation from becoming worse. They really handled the situation to the very best of their abilities, and we were really lucky that we had such a well-trained crew. American Airlines went on to say afterwards in a statement that the flight landed safely at Salt Lake City where law enforcement took off the disruptive passenger. They also went on to thank the flight crew for handling the situation so well and they also extended their thanks to their customers for being so understanding. The report said that the police cited them for being intoxicated. Now I'm not sure whether that was through alcohol or something else. And like the guy in the video earlier on, this is just another prime example of why you shouldn't get onto a flight when you're clearly intoxicated. 
I wouldn't even like the chance of getting onto a bus in the condition that some of these people get onto a plane in, you know, for fear of being left stranded somewhere, let alone having the police haul me off the thing. At the end of the day, it's not really worth it, and all these people end up learning the hard way. So I hope you enjoyed our first look at some airline agitators here on the channel and in episode number two we're going to be taking a look at some people who felt the pinch of the electric persuader Mr Sparky while they were travelling. It's pretty sure to be an electrifying episode and that's some in-flight entertainment that we could all enjoy. So I hope you'll all join me for that one and don't forget to make sure that you're subscribed and have notifications turned on so you always get notified when we drop a new episode here on Degenerate Watch. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop us a like as it really helps us out. And down below in the description are links to our social medias and don't forget to follow us over there so you can stay up to date on all the channel news. If you like what we do here at the channel and you'd like to help support us, there's also a link down below in the description for that as well. I'll be back very soon with another video, I hope to see you then. But if you can't wait until next time, why not check out one of the videos on screen now? Until then guys, stay safe, take care, peace.